welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. On today's show, we learn all about this year's Harvesting Hope fundraiser for Dove Domestic Violence Ended here in Quincy. It's coming up in a week, and uh, Jessica Cohen from Dove is here to tell us all about it. First, though, we do check out the weather and the news for you. Currently in Quincy, still kind of wet, windy, and warm out there. It's 63 degrees right now. We could have some more showers, maybe the rumble of thunder through the midday hours with a high today right around 70 degrees. The rain will taper off this evening. Skies will clear. Temperatures will drop to about 50 degrees. That sets us up for a gorgeous weekend. Tomorrow, definitely the pick of the two, but even Sunday's okay. Lots of sunshine, mild tomorrow with a high in the low 70s. Still pretty nice on Sunday. A few more clouds, but a high right around 70 degrees. We have some more rain in the forecast. For Monday, some spotty showers, a little cooler with highs Monday in the lower 60s. Again, we have uh, some rain in Quincy, 63 degrees right now. In the news today, Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch says that he has a lot of questions surrounding the proposal to implement a residency requirement for all new city employees. The Quincy City Council recently agreed to explore the residency requirement proposed by Ward 2 Councilor Anthony Andronico and Ward 3 Councilor Ian Kame. The mayor says the idea is not new. What's, what's difficult is that in Quincy, um, and this, this is good and bad, right? The values of our property have, have grown dramatically, risen dramatically, uh, which is great if you own property because that's your biggest investment probably in life. The downside to that is breaking into that market. So if you're requiring, uh, you know, somebody that isn't getting paid a great salary to try to uh, live here, whether they're renting or buying, then I think that that's, uh, that's a tough burden to overcome. So I, I'm going to look at the wording of, of the resolve, what the council is having a discussion with them, um, and uh, you know we'll take it from there. Proposal would allow for certain exemptions when a position requires specialized skills, and it would not affect any current employees. Quincy City Council's Finance Committee will be discussing a request from Mayor Thomas Koch for an additional $23 million to build the new Quincy Police Station. Koch says rising construction costs caused by inflation are pushing the price tag for the new public safety complex higher. City Council President Noel DeBona says it's not just impacting Quincy. But, you know, this will probably be for extra construction and also transportation improvements. Um, unfortunately, throughout the United States, throughout the world, is, uh, the construction costs have gone up, obviously, in the last year or two with the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and what we're looking to, to do, they've cut back, they've scaled back some things, but the costs have gone up. So they're coming back to the council for some, some funding, and we'll vet it a little bit more when we get into finance committee. City Council previously approved $120 million for the new complex, which will be built right at the site of the current police station on C Street. The new facility will also house the Fire Department's administration and the Office of Emergency Management. DeBona expects the Finance Committee to vote on the additional funding request by the end of November. The committee will be meeting Monday night at 6.30 at City Hall. Uh, Senators Elizabeth Warren and Ed Markey are holding a hearing at this hour at the JFK Federal Building in Boston about the future of the MBTA. Now, the hearing comes after a scathing report from the Federal Transit Administration about safety at the T following a series of incidents, including one death. The report citing the failure of the Department of Public Utilities to exercise its duty to oversee the T's management and operations. Today's hearing will also discuss the benefits of electrifying the MBTA system as a long-term solution. T General Manager Steve Poptak, DPU Chairman Matthew Nelson, Boston Mayor Michelle Wu, and a Federal Transit Administration official are all attending today's meeting. Two veteran Quincy police officers have been promoted. Sergeant Sean Biggins was recently promoted to lieutenant, and Officer James Goldrick promoted to sergeant. During a ceremony at Quincy City Hall, Quincy Police Chief Paul Keenan said those promotions are part of a major change in the command staff at the Quincy Police Department. Sean and Jamie, I know you're going to be a great addition 
to the police department going forward. We're doing a lot of changeover pretty soon. There'll be a, new, new, a lot of new faces in the department, especially at the command level, so you're coming at a great time. Uh, also, thank you, Mayor, Mayor Koch, uh, for your continued support. Every time we've had an opening, the job has been filled. Uh, we've gone through some challenging times, I know, in the city financially, but he's always been able to kept, keep the ranks up uh, at the Quincy Police Department. I'd like to thank Nicole and Patty also for putting this together. Their hard work and dedication in the personnel office and in the clerk's office brings everything together today. So we know how challenging it is, but you're finally here, and congratulations, both of you. I know you're going to be a welcome addition to the command staff. Good luck. Thank you. Biggins was hired in 1997 and became a sergeant in 2013. He also served as a detective. Goldrick has been on the force since 2005 and is also a member of the SWAT team and the Accident Reconstruction Units. Family, friends, and fellow officers all attended that swearing-in ceremony. Well, the Good Health Store in Quincy Center is officially closed as of August 31st. The Hancock Street store closed after 44 years in business when the owner of the building decided to sell that property. The owner of the business, Diane Maturo, tweeted out this photo of her twin sons after the shelves had been cleared out. Maturo opened the shop with her late husband, Ralph, back in 1978 after her mother suggested it because they were, quote, health nuts. Customers spent the last days of the store reminiscing about their fondness for the store and for the Maturo family. Maturo is keeping her Hanover Good Health store open and will also make deliveries here in Quincy. That is our check of news. Coming up, we sit down with Jessica Cohen from Dove. Domestic violence ended here in Quincy and learn all about their Harvesting Hope fundraiser next week. That's next. Welcome back. It is time for Dove Domestic Violence and its annual Harvesting Hope fundraiser. It's coming up next Friday, actually, October 21st. The Boston Marriott Hotel here in Quincy. Jessica Cohen is joining us from Dove to tell us all about Dove and all about the events. Hi, Jessica. Good to see you again. Hi, Joe. Thanks so much for having me. It must be fall if uh, you're here and Dove is having their fundraiser. That's right. I yeah. see you at the beginning of the fall and the beginning of the spring. That's right. Yeah. You're two big fundraisers for the year, right? Mm -hmm. is, is Harvesting Hope kind of the main one, though? It's for sure. Harvesting yeah. Harvesting Hope was our um, original gala, right. our first gala, um, and so I think we're moving into our 17th year of Harvesting Hope, um, wow. and we're looking forward to it. No kidding. Wow. How's things going at Dove these days? Things are good at yeah. Dove. Um, we um, recently had a flood in our main building. Oh, no. So um, you can imagine that this time of year, that's incredibly challenging as we're prepping for an event and getting ready for our holiday program. Um, was that a broken pipe event or a weather event? Um, it was a fixing the roof event. Oh. And so, yeah, yeah. So there's lots of stuff for us to work around, but the team at Dove always pulls together and makes magic happen no matter what. Okay. So <laughs> our programs are still going. We've got our support groups back and active. Um, our shelter program is doing really well. We've secured some um, long-standing funding for some transitional apartments to be able to serve more families um, and just trying to do the best we can with what we have. Let's, uh, for folks who might not be aware, although, what, it's been 40 years now for Dove? Uh, 44, 44 years. 44 years yeah. now. Um, but always, I think, good to recap its mission, mm -hmm. um, its purpose, right? Mm -hmm. What Dove is, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so Dove is an organization that serves um, survivors of domestic and partner violence. We have a both um, preventative and responsive strategy. So for folks that have experienced partner domestic violence, we offer a wide range of services. Um, we have a shelter program, which is probably what we're most known for, um, for families or individuals who are fleeing unsafe homes. Um, and then we also have legal services to help folks acquire um, restraining orders Orders, get some support with um, divorce and custody sort of things that are ongoing. Our legal department is pretty robust too and that we offer housing services, immigration um, support as well. 
We're in um, local police stations yes. providing support. So anytime a call comes in with a domestic violence report, we're reaching out to the identified victim and letting them know about our support so that they can reach out and they can, you know, get the help that they need to move beyond that relationship. Yeah. You're probably best known for the uh, shelter program because mm -hmm. that's really how it started, right? That was, it was out of a need. Yeah, so back in yeah. 1978, the program started with the shelter hotline and actually our legal program was one of our was first it? programs as well okay. yeah I know former congressman Delahunt had a big part in, yeah. in the founding of yeah the, um, <laughs> shame to say I, <laughs> I am the old enough to remember that <laughs> um, how would you say that the you know the services the mission then to now has changed what are some of the biggest changes you think that have happened I think some of the biggest changes is that we've really thought about um, how do you prevent domestic violence before it even starts because otherwise yeah. we're always just going to be responding um, so we have a pretty robust uh, prevention program our youth speak program yeah. we're in a number of different high schools in Norfolk County really talking to young people about what are the signs of an unhealthy relationship how do you hold your friends that are being unhealthy towards their partners accountable mm. how do you address that um, how do we really create a norm where we're talking about what's okay and what's not okay in dating relationships. Yeah, so many, you know, times we hear of these high profile domestic mm -hmm. incidents, almost seems like almost daily, but yeah. certainly weekly. Um, do you have kind of an emergency response team that will actually go out to an event like that? So we have a 24 hour hotline, okay. um, and I know you folks always play our hotline Absolutely. number at the bottom, yes. so that's yep. great. We have a 24 hour hotline um, where there's always a staff person available to uh, provide emotional support, safety planning, and really respond and triage those emergencies when they come up. Okay, and they will be referred by the responding police officers at that, at that scene. Yeah, yeah, oftentimes. So, I mean, there's the connection right there mm -hmm. um, to let them know the services are available. About how long does a family typically stay with Dove, you know, through yeah. the services and, and get back, quote unquote, on their feet? Yeah, I mean, I think that that is a, that there's a range. Yeah. Our shelter program, we were really seeing just due to lack of affordable housing and options that um, while we were intended to be a 90 day program back in the day when we started, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, our families were really staying with us for around a year to 18 months. Really? Okay. Um, we've been able to uh, hire a full-time housing person in the shelter who does direct housing work and we've got that number down to about nine months to a year okay. on average um, but the good thing about Dove is that our folks that move out of the shelter can still access our community support groups um, we've got some counseling for kids on site mm. so once you're part of the Dove community there's a number of different resources you can access um, in a real wraparound way okay uh, do you get um folks who push back and say, oh, I can just go with my family, you know, stay somewhere else and I'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, we want to encourage our survivors sure. to be the expert on what makes the most sense to them. And we let them know that um, not everybody needs to enter a shelter and we're still here to do the counseling, the emotional support and the things that they need. So we really tailor our services to the needs of our survivors. Sure. The goal, I'm sure, is you don't want to see them again once, once they leave, right? So you don't want any... Yep. Uh, recidivism. Yeah. Domestic violence ended. We'd all love to be yeah. out of a job. Exactly. Yeah. Part of uh, the way that you do you that mission, though, is to raise funds. You're a nonprofit, a 501c3 organization. You mentioned the spring used to be Divas Dance fundraiser. I know it's changed now, um, mm -hmm. but Harvesting Hope in the fall. And the name Harvesting Hope, I think, really describes what it is you're trying to do, right, is to provide hope to these victims. Yes, absolutely. And this event, we get to honor folks that have worked alongside us and supported our mission. So this year we have um, two pillars of hope that we're honoring, and that's a nice touch to the event for us to be able to say thank you to the community because none of us can do this on our own. Mm. Who are those pillars? So this year we're honoring Karen Alba, who is a person who works at State Street. Karen oh. started as a volunteer in our shelter years and years and years ago. She was the person I would call to say, do you want to come have a movie night? Do you want to come carve pumpkins with us? Um, she works really closely with Don now on a lot of our um, advisory councils and things. Don Hayes, our director of marketing and development. Sure. Um, and then we're also um, honoring a woman, Hema, who is part of Jane Doe Inc., which is a, a broader um, organization that we work with. Hema's really supported us with our um, legal programs and just giving us some advice and support around some of the bigger policy things that are um, 
really huge and need attention as well. Okay. Have you seen changes in legislation, Jessica, when it comes to domestic violence? And does, does Dove lobby for those? We do. Yeah. I mean, I think it's tricky for us because even though we have a number of different programs, our staff is really, really small. Yeah. Um, so through HEMA's guidance and support, we've really um, been able to think about what are the policies that we want to support? What are the things that we want to lobby for at the state house on a higher level? Mm. Um, and it's helpful to have that partnership with someone that we trust that we know understands the work and does it in the same way so that it's not on us as we're doing our day-to-day -day jobs to figure out oh my gosh what do we go out what do we lobby for what do we support right. um, it's really helpful yeah are there volunteer uh, volunteers at Dove and other opportunities for volunteers there are volunteers okay. at Dove we're heading into our biggest volunteer opportunity of the year which is our holiday assistance program oh, sure. um, that kicks off it feels like right after Harvesting Hope ends, I'm becoming, you know, an elf in the holiday <laughs> season. Um, so that's an opportunity that people have to help out either through um, donations or through like hands-on volunteer opportunities. Okay, and reach out uh, through the email we've been showing, phone yep. numbers. Okay. Yep. And yeah, and that's right on our help. website too, information on how to find us there. Okay, very good. Let's talk about some fun stuff. Harvesting Hope, uh, it is again at the Boston Area Quincy, October 21st gala and fundraiser helping save lives and families tell me what's happening so we're going to be a week from today yes. at the Boston Marriott Quincy. Um, Harvesting Hope is like our traditional gala. So we have cocktail hour, we have um, a silent auction with lots of great things on the table this year. There's a lot of different opportunities for fundraising at the event. We do this um, fun thing, a wine pull, where for $20 you buy a bottle of white or a bottle of red, and there might be a fun surprise in there for you. Maybe it's a scratch ticket, maybe it's a gift card. Um, we also this year our clients painted these little trinket boxes and so we kind of made a game out of it um, where you can purchase for $20 a little trinket box you could open it up and it could just say thank you or you could open it up and there can be something fun inside that lets you know you get to choose a gift card from a wall and it's either a 25 or a $50 Visa gift card okay fun yeah what are the hours, by the way, of the event? The event is from 6 to 10. Okay. So cocktail hour is from 6 to 7, and then we'll move into the program um, around 7 o'clock. Okay. Uh, tickets still available? Tickets are still available. Okay. They're on our website. Um, there's a Harvesting Hope tab right at the top, which will take you to everything you need. Okay. Now, you mentioned silent auction, and I always want to hear about some of the fun items that you have up for auction. Yeah. So we have a silent and live auction. Oh, okay. Um, our silent auction, with the holidays coming up, we really did try to think of some fun hosting packages. So we've got a baking package. We've got a hosting package, which has everything you need for the holidays. There's um, gift card for a floral arrangement, a gift card to home goods, a turkey baking dish, and a <laughs> bunch of other fun things in there. Um, we've got some Bruins tickets, we've got a whole car detail package, lots of spa stuff, and also restaurants. So, okay. you know, if you need a night off from cooking because it is also holiday time and yes. we're all doing everything, we've got it all. Okay. And does that start before the fundraiser, the silent auction? Yeah. So the silent auction will be um, launched on Monday and folks will be able to go on. You don't even have to attend the event, mm -hmm. although we'd love to see everyone of course, there. Yeah. Um, and you can bid right online. Okay. All right. And drawings that evening? That evening. Okay. Yep. So the silent auction will close at 745 and we'll name our winners then. We've also okay. got a really fun raffle to win four nights at the Kilkea Castle in Ireland. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you could buy a $10 raffle ticket and you could go to Ireland for okay. four nights. That's a good it's, temptation. It's a steal. Uh, don't have to be present to win, I'm assuming, right? You don't have okay. to be present, no. But, of course, live auction, you do, because it's live. You do. <laughs> What's you do. going on for that? We have really amazing live auction items. Yeah. So we have an in-home wine tasting um, that is done by Bob Griffin, who's a longtime supporter of Dove. Um, we have a week stay at a Truro cottage down the Cape, which is gorgeous for six folks. And then we have this incredible Mexico house for 18 people. <laughs> um, wow. You get to stay for a week. It's like your own hotel. <laughs> uh, it comes with a chef. There's an outdoor jungle gym, like a literal gym in the jungle. It's really, f really incredible and fantastic. Wow. Okay. So you really have had a lot of people step up and, and donate these items, both locally, but it sounds like uh, nationally and internationally as well. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Who's your auctioneer? 
Our auctioneer is Erin Ward. So we've worked with her. This will be our third time working with her. Um, we really enjoy working directly with Erin and her team. Erin um, is someone who really identifies with our mission and we feel really connected and really fortunate to work with her. Nice. So the funds from this event, uh, Jessica, are they geared to any specific uh, area at Dove? Not anything specific. Okay. The funds for this event sort of go to a little bit of everything. Okay. Um, Dove has a really special way of sort of thinking together collectively about which programs need more support and more funding. Um, we're going to be launching a legal campaign at some point where we're really looking to bring in more funds to build upon our legal program. Okay. Um, so all the funds that we get really help keep our mission going. Okay. About how much does this event raise? We're hoping for two hundred and fifty thousand okay. dollars. That's our goal. Okay. Is this um, now the first in person uh, since the pandemic, or were you in person last year? Or we were in person okay. last year. Um, this is our second in person event, or third in person, second harvesting hope okay. in person since the pandemic. Will there be any pandemic protocols uh, that folks would have to be aware of? Yes. I, too bad we still have to ask it, but <laughs> but we do. Yeah. We do. So we um, we work with this app called CrowdPass. So anybody that purchases a ticket, they'll get an email sent right to them where they're able to upload either a vaccine card or a negative COVID test taken within 72 hours. Okay. Um, we do have masks on site. We do have some tests on site. We try to make this as safe as possible sure. for everyone. And, you know, this is our new normal, I think. Right. I think you're right. Yeah. Are there any um, aspects of Virtuality, you know, that are still in place at Dove uh, in terms of meeting with clients, um, providing services, or, or raising funds. Yeah, we have felt and have seen from our survivors that for some folks, um, if they're immunocompromised, if there's mm. concerns about getting sick, they prefer that um, online Zoom meeting as yeah. opposed to coming into the office. And then in other cases, for some folks, it's just easier yep. to take a meeting on your lunch break at work than having to find another time to come in. So our clients have been really adaptable and the staff have as well. Yeah, you can't ignore the convenience factor. You know, uh, it's going to play a huge part, especially in a New England winter mm -hmm. um, as well. And uh, also for folks who might be intimidated uh, mm -hmm. or, you know, are, are just not comfortable with um, face to face meeting at, mm -hmm. at that present time. Sure. So you'll integrate that. Talk a little bit about the um, you mentioned the board, the governing structure mm -hmm. of Dove and how that works. Yeah, so we have um, a phenomenal board of directors. Um, we have folks that uh, volunteer their time to come and lend their leadership and their support to the organization. Um, so Dove's board members uh, really do, we've just voted on a new board member, um, really do come to us from all different backgrounds and have different skills and assets that they can bring to be supportive to us. I think one of the things that I'm most grateful for with our board is how connected they are to the actual organization. Mm -hmm. So I've got a bunch of board members that are on the event committee with me that are doing everything from running around and collecting donations for us. And it's nice to just get a text or an email from them saying, what are you doing? How can we help? And just our board is so close to us that they're able to say, you're doing a really great job and we just want you to know. So that's that's really nice. We're fortunate for our board members. Yeah, it means a lot, I'm sure. Absolutely, to know that your works are being appreciated, you know, and I'm sure you get that from your clients as well. Yes, we do. Um, our clients are one of the things, I, so I was running our shelter for years yes. and years, and one of the things that I would love the most is sometimes when that emergency hotline rings, it's not a tragedy. It's a former client who's calling back because they're so excited that they just got a job or they're going back to school mm -hmm. or they got a new apartment. And sometimes we're still their first phone call <laughs> five, six, ten years later. Wow. And that's just really special and really meaningful. Well, you've obviously become part of their family at that point. Will there be um, survivor stories at Harvesting Hope? So this year, our video was a little bit different. So typically, we spotlight a survivor right. to sort of share their experience. And this year, we really wanted to think about spotlighting our prevention program, our okay. Youth Speak program. Oh. Um, so our video this year uh, speaks a little bit to there are 15 folks who lost their lives due to domestic violence in Massachusetts in the past year with a median age of 36 years old. So young. Yeah. So young. And so we had our students um, from North Quincy High School come and film with us and really talk about 
what that feels like to hear that, to hear that a person at 20 years old lost their lives due to domestic violence in Massachusetts. Mm. Um, and we asked them, what do you think it takes to end domestic violence? What do you think that people need to be able to move beyond this? And, you know, we often say it's the next generation that's going to save us yeah. and fix all these things. And these kids are really, really incredible. And we're fortunate to work with them. That's amazing. So that'll be shown at the fundraiser? It will, and then it'll go on our YouTube page. Oh, it will be. All right, very good. Yeah, I would think that that'd be very impactful um, because they are so close to, to that age to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, and I think also probably shed some light on what domestic violence is, right? We have this misconception probably of it always being physical assaults. Um, not so much. It can not be emotional so much, or psychological. Yeah. yeah. One of our students talked about that really directly in saying, I didn't know that there was anything That's called right. financial abuse. And so hearing that from the eyes of a 17 year old, I'm sure there's adults in the audience that also didn't know that. So we're always learning and growing. Well, again, tickets are going quickly. Uh, so get online or give you a call and uh, get yours and then start bidding online on Monday. Please. Yes. All right, Jessica, anything else we should let folks know about? Just we're really looking forward to seeing them and we hope that they can come out next week. I hope you have a great event again this year. Thanks for coming by. Thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome. Just enough time to uh, check the forecast for you for the rest of the day today. Slowly improving. It'll still be kind of showery, windy. It's warm too. High around 70 degrees this afternoon. Clearing out this evening down to 50. Paving the way for a super duper weekend. Look at tomorrow. Sunny 71, partly sunny near 70 Sunday. And some showers back on Monday with highs in the low 60s. Thanks again to Jessica Cohen for joining us from Dove. Domestic violence ended. Thank you to our crew. Thank you for watching. Monday here in the program, the uh, captains of the Quincy Salvation Army will be joining us. Hope you can join us for that as well. Meantime, check out our website anytime. It's QATV.org. All our latest programs, news and information, video on demand, live streaming, and more. I'm Joe Catalano. Have a great weekend.